Gentlemen, gentlemen, good morning. It's Monday afternoon, so it's good afternoon really. Uh, we've had a huge step forward with the uh, with the welder. Uh, I was going to connect it to a switch fuse, but when I went to get what I thought was a switch fuse, uh, it turned out to be just an isolator, so it wasn't fused. So I took my life in my hands, connected it to a three-phase plug, plugged it in and turned it on. And the results I'm going to show you in just a minute. Uh, but I'm very pleased with it, so you can tell it's a good result. I've had a, a nice comment from Tom Osselton who thinks I should leave the lens cap on. He may have a point. Uh, and also from somebody else who I can't remember uh, berating me for constantly using the epithet chaps. Well, I shall try to curb it. So from now on it's gentlemen or people or something different, but not chaps. Apparently some people have a thing about chaps. I won't go into that. So here we are. Right, I'll turn you off and I'll turn you back on handheld and we'll go and have a look. Okay, here we go. As I said, I took my life in my hands, although I had thoroughly tested it. There goes the fan. Here goes the motor. What's noisy is that cut uh current relay down there, I shall clean that up and give it a serve. Can you see that going in and out? Yes you can. But basically we also have welding current. So there we go. So we've got a good chance to be all working. Uh, nothing's blown up as you would expect but I'm always a bit nervous of transformers because it's it's very difficult to tell uh, without an accurate ohmmeter whether you've got shorted turns or not. Well, I think we can safely say that because we haven't got vast amounts of smoke belching out of this, we haven't got any shorted turns and it seems to be fully working. So what it needs now is a clean up and a Eurotorch conversion putting onto there. <coughs> Excuse me, I'll just go and <coughs> shut it off and then I'll show you a few details because Richard wanted to know a few details so here you go Richard the problem I have with it is this now this has obviously been damaged and repaired now this is the repair that's there at present that bolts over there that fits onto there that puts pressure on the uh, wire drive roller. Now it works. You can't knock it, it works. But it's a bit too rough for me. <coughs> and that's a bit bloody awful down there. So my idea is to, is to fit a Eurotorch conversion to it. Uh, I can't say that it would be very difficult. I would need a longer than normal uh, brass tube. Uh, unless I mount the Eurotorch actually inside, I, I want to put it on the outside face, so I probably need longer than normal brass feed tube, but that's by the by, that's not a problem. My idea for the repair was along these lines to use these two holes here and to fit a piece of angle iron steel or uh, maybe aluminium with a, with a hole milled in it over there and to pick up, take all this out, pick up here, put a plate across the front of it, so steel would be better because then I can just weld onto it, and then weld a piece to that as well, remake this better so that I could put the lock nuts on the Eurotorch conversion onto that plate, and then just have that with a proper adjusting wheel here. <coughs> but other than that, <coughs> he said coughing, she seems to be all good. So what I'm going to do now is a few more tests, test different settings, test different speeds on the wire feed motor and, uh, and see how she goes. 
But to all intents and purposes, it's working. So that'll do for now, chaps, and I'll bring you back when I know some more, when I've got something more interesting to tell you. Oh, look, it's you, you, you. Good afternoon, people. It's Tuesday afternoon. It's very warm here, really nice day. And uh, after yesterday's success with the welder, I went out and uh, last night I ordered a new uh, Euro torch, an umbilical for it. Uh, I can't really go any further with that now until that arrives because I need to know the dimensions uh, to be able to modify the, uh, or, or should I say modify and repair the wire feed mechanism. But the welder's fine, everything works. Uh, I've checked it over, I've also had a look at that relay and uh, quietened that down a lot. Uh, it just needed a clean, just a bit of rust on the ends of the pole pieces, that's all. But other than that, it's all working, so I've decided that I'm going to uh, crack on with the uh, with the tractor and uh, start where I left off, get the uh, new oil seal fitted and the flywheel bolted into place and uh, go from there and see how we go. So I'll get stuck into that and I'll bring you back when I have anything more interesting to tell you. Okay, catch you in a bit. Well, here we go chaps. I've had the flywheel off, put the new crankshaft seal in, I have bolted this pulley to this plate, uh, centred it all up and I've come to the point where I need to bolt this plate here to the, uh, to the flywheel and I need the bolts which were the 2CV uh, bolts that held the clutch plate on. And they are an odd size, they are 7 by 1mm pitch and I haven't got any, which is a sickener because several years ago now this workshop was full of 2CVs and the uh, Luton back which is my storeroom outside was full of 2CV spare parts. I had I think three or four complete cars and about another four cars that I'd broken for parts because they were too rusty to save really and uh, I sold the lot to Donington Park Motor Museum which I understand has closed. Uh, I was thinking about it this morning and I checked up on the internet uh, to see if I could get any pictures of Donington Park Motor Museum to see if they'd Actually, they were supposed to be going to rebuild them all and run around the museum site with them, run around the race course with them. And uh, I thought, I'll have a look and see if I can see any pictures, see if they've rebuilt any of them. And lo and behold, all I get is a news item telling me that Donington Park Motor Museum is closed. So what's happened to them, I don't know. But anyway, I haven't got any bloody bolts. So I'm going to have to go home, order a piece of quarter key steel for this key, and order some 7 by one millimeter high tensile bolts. What a sod. Anyway, it's going up for 4 o'clock and I've had it and I've got to go and deliver a cement mixer to my father-in-law so we'll call it a day for today but we're getting on. And when this is finished, when this tractor is finished, which in actual fact isn't going to be as long as you think, uh, I've caught up with my backlog of undone projects, I think. I think I have. Apart from the, the tractor, of course, is a bit of a long-going project, but that's nine-tenths done. It wants those front tyres put on, which I'll get round to very quickly. But, yes, good progress made today. So I'm quite pleased. Quite pleased. Catch you all later. <laughs> Good afternoon people. It's Wednesday, I think, and I've been in mass production with uh, coal frame risers. I made another three because the plants are growing and we need to lift them up a bit. So that took up most of the morning because uh, I didn't get here early because I had to go and get some pipe. I bought some plastic pipe 
to uh, put the tap in. Uh, I was a bit shocked at the price, but I bought it anyway. Uh, so I'm going to put that tap in next. Uh, and once I've got water to the door, I can actually test that pressure washer. So there's no point in plugging it in and messing about without water. So it's not a good idea to run them with no water in, especially when they've been stuck for a long time. Uh, but I've, uh, I've ordered the key steel for the tractor and I've also ordered some 7mm by 1mm pitch uh, bolts to hold the clutch on, uh, which was a bit of a pain not having any, but there you go. Uh, so they're on the way and uh, I'll just start to show you a little bit forward, uh, move, move forward on the tractor. I was, uh, what I very often do with things like this is I look at the problems that there are with it and I think around them quite a little bit and then I go home and go to bed and wake up with a solution and uh, it's happened again so there you go so what I'm going to do now is very carefully pick you up and go and have a look so I don't cause all that noise so here we go now this is the bearing that's going to be the outer bearing to support the shaft so that I'm not putting excessive uh, side thrust onto the crankshaft which it, it is not designed to take. Right? And what I've got to do basically is build a frame to support this. So what I've thought of doing is I'm going to take these studs out here, here and here and extend them, put four pieces of tube on and then build a frame at the front to support this bearing and bolt it on in four places, uh, on four long spaces. And the long spacer at this side will give me a support for my starter motor, which goes just here uh, on there and, and goes onto the flywheel there. The starter motor is actually a starter motor off a uh, Briggs & Stratton uh, engine, and it starts this, uh, starts this tractor very well indeed, but there you go. Uh, so I've, I've sussed out how I'm going to do this now. <coughs> there's more going on. There's more going on than meets the eye because what I've got to do. Uh, this is the drive belt that drives the tractor forwards and backwards. That drives on the first pulley in there. Uh, this is the pulley at the belt that drives the grass cutting box, uh, and that drives on either of the second two. Right. But what I've got to work out here is a way of tensioning and slackening the grass belt, uh, the grass deck drive belt. And this lever is the one that operates the grass deck drive, grass deck drive belt. So I've got to rig up some sort of jockey pulley either under here or over here to tension this belt when it's on its when it's on its pulley like that and it's driving down through those pulleys <coughs> to the grass deck. So I need a jockey pulley for that, but I've got various jockey pulleys that I've saved off uh, like that one uh, off off timing belts, and that actually jockeys that to enable that belt to go around a slight bend like that because previously. The uh, the pulley was lower and it didn't need it, but it now needs to go on the slight bend. So uh, that's but that all that all works and that's fully adjustable anyway. So I can set that up. So that's as far as I've got with this at the moment. Uh, but all the fly the seals in the flywheels back on and torqued up. So I'm happy about that. Uh, and that's it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into the uh, into the machine shop through there and I'm going to start putting saddles up in the uh, in the cable box for a pipe that goes from there round there down there through that hole which you can't quite see but that goes through into the other side and then down there into the door so I'm going to crack on with that now, and when I've done it, I'll bring you back and show you. Okay, chaps. That's it for now. See you in a bit. Well, here we are, boys and girls. It's 
and the pipe is in all the way around through the wall all the way to the front of the shop and down to the block I haven't got a tap so tomorrow morning I'm going to have to buy a half inch bib tap and then we'll have water to the front of the shop and we can test the pressure wash and see if it works I'm sure it will give it a test right I'm going home for some tea and to relax with a cup of tea in my computer. I'll see you all later. I think I said chaps earlier on today. I'm sorry chaps. Bye. Well boys and girls we've advanced to tech level. First of all, look what arrived yesterday. This is the 250 amp uh, 4 metre welding torch and uh, Euro connector adapter uh, which came from TechArc at Osbaldwick near York and I must say looking at it and looking at the quality of it it is far better than some others I've bought and uh, yes I shall certainly I shall certainly go to TechArc again which I should have done in the first place because I've been I mean I've actually visited the place several times and they're really nice people and they really do look after you and certainly should I need another replacement torch I shall be going to them They've, they have actually repaired a couple of welders for me that uh, had faults on the electronic cards that were uh, beyond my ken so I uh, I took them there and got them fixed and, uh, and they're good people I have no connection with them other than as a satisfied customer right and the second thing we've got if we just walk over to the door, I'm giving it away now by all this water, aren't I? We have a tap and we have a water supply at the front of the workshop. I don't know if you can hear the pump running, but this is a pumped water supply from the uh, from the well. From the well, it's not actually a well; it's a cistern. Uh, it's an underground water storage tank that stores water from the uh, roof from all the gutters and it's down there in that black hole because since it was put in I've lifted the floor level quite a lot in this workshop and the covers are off because I've had trouble with the pump it's a strange fault uh, it works perfectly provided I'm here every week and if I stay off for two or three weeks, uh, when I come here, I turn it back on, and it runs for so long, then it trips the RCD, uh, which is in the in the single phase mains there. It trips the RCD, uh, and so you reset the RCD, and it runs again, then it trips it again. And I've tried all manner of things. I've replaced the electronic control box on it. I've been inside the electronic control box and searched for any dampness and moisture and I cannot find a thing. It looks as dry as a bone in there. And it's all sealed. Uh, it's all o-ring sealed. So why it should trip, I've no idea. But once it's apparently dried out, then off it goes and it works perfectly again. And it'll work perfectly. If I use it every week, it'll work perfectly forever. But if I'm away for two or three weeks and I leave it, come back to it, and uh, it trips the RCD. Right, so my next jobs now are going, now I've got this water pipe in and working, I'm going to uh, have a quick tidy up, and then I think I'll look at this pressure washer, and we'll see if we can get it working. Uh, and of course tomorrow's job is going to be fitting this so I'll bring you back when there's something more interesting to show you bye for now hello people well I'm on with the pressure washer uh, I've had a good clean up I've taken this pipe off here because it was uh, on a fitting here which was obviously leaking uh, and this was a non-return valve that was stuck so 
I decided to have a cup of tea and when I went to have my cup of tea I went into the fridge and realised that the fridge wasn't working so here we have the culprit so whether this is uh, I'm gonna just click the switch off and see if I can see why it's not operating but uh, it looks like it's going to be a new fridge thermostat so there you go so one job leads to another but at least I've got a cup of tea there you go all right I'll bring you back when there's more interesting news bye for now and here we are gents it's testing time so we'll turn on the new water tap powers on switch on And off we go. Which is that? Oh, that's both nozzles. That's both nozzles. Let me just turn that off. And that's the pressure nozzle. Now, I think it's a bit weak, this. And I think what's happened is that uh, one of the seals has gone in the actual pump, although it is pumping a fair pressure. And it is actually improving. Uh, but actually, it is, it's getting better all the time. It's probably not been used for a long time. Yeah, it's getting better all the time. Anyway, by the by, it's working. It's working, it's working well. The only problem seems to be. It's leaking water out of the drain holes in the pump itself, so it probably needs a new seal kit. But uh, given the fact that uh, Bateman's there are still in business as Cellark and still making uh, units very much like this, uh, I might give them a call and see if they've got spare parts for this pump. Other than that, I've got the details on the pump, so I'll just be able to order some up. And uh, I've fitted them before, they're not very dear and they're not a difficult job to fit but I seem to have cured the leak on there, that was leaking uh, this was leaking here uh, sorry there and that all seems to be cured now so I think we're going to call that done and given the fact that it's Friday lunchtime I'm going to have a cup of tea and uh, get on with the next project which I think is going to be a big tidy up in the stores so I think that's about it for this week chaps I shall have a nice relaxing weekend and on Monday I've got the choice between the tractor which I'll probably leave until I've finished the welder over there because now the uh, turn the lights on now that the wonderful uh, Euro torch kit has come I can get all this bodge off here and uh, <coughs> still coughing well and <coughs> start fitting that. Okay, right, well I think we'll call that it for this week chaps and I'll catch you next week when I've got even more interesting things to do. Bye for now, lovely day out there, lovely day, bye.